ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار My dear brothers and sisters in Islam today I want to speak about one word one word alone assumption the word assumption very powerful very dangerous you're familiar with english language and culture to assume is not a good thing to do to assume something can lead to very negative outcomes for the one making the assumption and the one the assumption is made of in the arabic language the word is one one assumption not quite ilm knowledge and not quite shek doubt somewhere in the middle where you have two things one perhaps you are more inclined toward than the other and it can go both ways good assumption where you assume the best or evil assumption so of one having an evil assumption is very dangerous and this is the tendency of mankind being the creatures that we are challenged in many ways and in the mix of that challenge challenge is the shaitan there to stir up emotions and play with our thoughts driving us towards evil there is often a tendency to assume the negative and so we're challenged to turn that back positive assumption allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addresses in the quran he says when the battle of the ithm that some of assumption is sinful some of assumption is sinful the sinful nature of assumption is the negative assumptions that you act upon the the assumptions the negative and evil assumptions that you act upon they are sinful so today i would like to highlight not the negatives of evil assumption i think those are all well known and understood we've all lived through negative and evil assumption either we have assumed evil of others or we have been the subject of evil assumption and i think it's safe to say that all of us here have experienced in one way or another evil assumptions but what i would like to bring to your attention is why do we assume evil 
in order that we can avoid these avenues. So I'll highlight five, and there are numerous. The first of those is ignorance of a subject, of a person. We don't know, and so we are left to assume. We don't know something. Instead of stepping back and saying, مِنْ حُسْنِ إِسْلَامِ الْمَرْءِ تَرْكُهُ مَا لَا يَعْنِي The beautification of one's Islam is that they leave things that don't have anything to do with them. Something that you don't know, more than likely, it's none of your business. And the best thing to do, best policy, let's say, is let's just take ourselves out of the equation. I don't know, that's not my business, I'm not going to speak on it. This is a challenge to say I don't know. To say that's not my business. That's a huge challenge and it could be a burden for many of us. We like to know things. We like to be involved. We like to be a resource. We like to have answers to questions and sometimes we answer questions we don't even know what we're talking about. The best thing is to acknowledge I don't know it's not my business because otherwise we're left to do nothing but assume and with shaitan playing on us pitting us against one another at times we're often driven to assume the worst we are often driven to assume the worst of course that leads to a negative outcome and it can be damaging it can destroy relationships assumptions misunderstandings because of assumptions can destroy relationships they destroy marriages they destroy families assumptions can destroy communities they can undermine a relationship in the blink of an eye assuming the worst. Very famous example with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and there are numerous people assuming of him something negative not knowing perhaps who he was or not knowing the true nature of his mission. He was called many things many names assumed Thoughts were adopted, perceptions. One of them, the Khuwaisira, when he came to the Prophet Wasallam out of ignorance, not knowing who he was, what this man stood for, and he said to him, I'dal ya Muhammad, fama adalt. He says, be just, O oh Muhammad, because you have not been just. Hadi qisma ma uridu biha wajh Allah. He says, this division, talking about the division of properties, has not been done for the sake of Allah. Can you believe someone would say that about the best of mankind? Someone would say that about our Prophet wasallam. you are not just. He was sent rahmatan lil alameen, as a mercy to mankind. Because he was acting upon ignorance, speaking on assumptions negative and evil assumptions number two the avenues to evil assumption is our fancies following whims and desires that's right we are all tested by such things we are tested by our desires sometimes we have a desire to put others down in order to make ourselves look better. We have a desire for such things at times. And as I mentioned before, we have a desire sometimes just to be speaking about something, to appear knowledgeable and to appear as a resource. Speaking upon assumption. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded in the Quran, one of the prophets, Dawood alayhi salam, he says, فَحْكُمْ بَيْنَ النَّاسِ بِالْحَقِّ وَلَا تَتَّبِعِ الْهَوَى He says, judge between mankind with truth. 
and justice. وَلَا تَتَّبِعِ الْهَوَى And do not follow desires. فَيُضِلَّكَ عَنْ سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ Because this will divert you from the path of Allah. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يُضِلُّونَ إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَضِلُّونَ عَنْ سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ لَهُمْ عَذَابٌ شَدِيدٌ بِمَا نَسُوا يَوْمَ الْحِسَابِ Those that lead astray or are led astray from the path of Allah, they will find a terrible punishment from what they have forgotten of the day of reckoning and account. The great Imam al-Ghazali rahimahullah ta'ala, he says, one of the rights of the Muslim is that you do not think ill of him or her. That is one of their rights. So you think right now, the person sitting next to you on your right, on your left, in front of you, behind you, each and every one of us, we have and are afforded a certain amount of rights over the other. We are due certain things by virtue of faith. By virtue of our faith, we are afforded by Allah certain rights certain expectations that we hold each other to. One of those is that you do not think ill of others. You do not hold ill assumptions of the other. If you assume bad of him because you saw corruption from others, then you have oppressed him and as a result you have sinned. Think about that. That's like stereotyping. Stereotyping. That's a type of assumption, isn't it? We see someone from a particular group of people, perhaps described by the color of their skin, the language they speak, the country of origin they're from, the culture, their identity, these signposts of identity and signals. We see one of them do something and then we assume the same for the rest. We assume the same for the rest. And this is what Imam al-Ghazali is getting at. He says, if you assume bad of him, because you saw corruption from others, then you have oppressed him, and as a result you have sinned. All these people do that. All those people do this. They're all like what I saw. You've just oppressed an entire people. Right? These are one of the ways in which, or the avenues in which we can assume evil of others. Ignorance, acting upon desires, stereotyping. Number three is accompanying unrighteous. Spending time with sinful people. And we know the evil effects of bad company. Again, something given. This is something given. We don't need to talk about the evil effects of bad company anymore, right? We all understand that we're grown enough and mature enough, even if we find ourselves spending a lot of time in bad company, we know that it's bad company. We know that it's unhealthy. We know that it's negative. When you spend time with evil company, they wear off on your personality. One of the evil effects is that it leads you to assume ill of others. Why is that? Do you know a person that assumes others are always lying? is because they themselves lie a lot. The person that assumes everyone is out to cheat them is because probably, and this is not 100%, probably they cheat a lot. When they're around people that assume negative of others all the time, guess what? They're going to think not only the same way, but everyone else is assuming negative. You are who you hang out with. This is especially true for young people. But us older people and our elders are certainly not immune to it either. It's not something specific to young people who are of course very impressionable, but guess what? We all are to a degree regardless of how old and mature and wise and stable we may be. 
one of the greats of the past, he said, his name was Abu Hatim al-Busti, he said, bad company will lead to making negative assumptions about the righteous. Whoever has bad company will inevitably be deemed one of them. Not only, this is what leads us into the next point, not only will it lead you to assuming bad of others, but it will put you in a compromising position for others to assume bad of you because they see you surrounded by evil people. He says a sensible person avoids such people so that he does not become victim of suspicion. Just as good company brings about all good, bad company brings about all evil. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم ورسائل المسلمين من كل ذنب فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم. بسم الله والحمد لله حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا في كما يحب ربنا ويرضاه. نصلي ونسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تبعهم بإسان إلى يوم الدين وبعد. Brothers and sisters, number four. The fourth main major avenue to evil assumptions is putting yourself in situations that make it easy for others to assume negative about you. Yes, that <clears throat> rejects the idea that a man is in the heart only. You shouldn't judge me. If you put yourself out there in a sticky situation, you have opened yourself up to being the subject or object that is of negative assumption. That's some accountability right there. Right? We have to take accountability for our own honor and our own dignity to a degree. We should be responsible for our honor to a degree and not expect or assume that everyone will protect it for us. So we have to avoid these sticky situations. This was the manner of our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. One night he was out of the house making i'tikaf. A great deed. Secluding himself in the masjid for the worship of Allah. And he was visited by his wife. And that would happen from time to time during a decaf. They would come visit the Prophet ﷺ. He would spend some time with them, talk to them. And then on this particular evening, he began to escort her home. He left to take her home safely at night. While he was walking home with his wife, there were two men from the Ansar. They saw the Prophet ﷺ. By the way, this was a newlywed. Perhaps the news did not spread around the city that he was newly married to this particular woman. And when they saw the Prophet ﷺ, they backed away to give him space, privacy. The Prophet ﷺ, he says, hold on now, come here. So they came. He says, this is Sophia bint Huyay. This is basically, this is my wife. They said, oh no, we, we weren't thinking anything. We weren't thinking anything of it, O oh, Messenger of Allah. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, إِنَّ الشَّيْطَانِ يَجْرِي مِنْ إِبْنِ آدَمْ مَجْرَ الدَّمْ He says that shaitan runs through the veins of Adam just like blood. Runs through the veins. It just pumps through. Shaitan is there. He says, I feared that something would be thrown into your heart, something evil. And you would say something. We saw so-and-so last night with a strange woman. We saw him or her with a stranger walking down the road, spending quality time together, 
It looked pretty romantic. Headlines for tomorrow's early morning tea. Or meet up at the masjid with your friends, your brothers, or for the ladies. Guess what I saw? Guess who I saw? That's the reality, isn't it? So number four is being in sticky situations. The way around is don't put yourself in such predicaments. Be responsible. Not only will you preserve your honor, but you will also prevent others from assuming evil of you. You have to be thoughtful. You have to be thoughtful. Where am I? What am I doing? Yeah, you're right. You have to be sincere with your actions. There's no doubt about that. There's no doubt about that. But with the right intention, this is a sincere act to avoid suspicion. And this is something that you will be rewarded for, insha'Allah. The last one, number five, the fifth avenue towards evil suspicion is enmity. Having enmity, you have hiqt, some hatred or animosity towards someone else. You hold some envious thoughts of the other. And by having such feelings, you're driven to want to assume evil of them. Because you don't like them. You don't like them, so guess what? I wish that their position would be detracted in my eyes. I don't like them. I don't want anyone else to like them. It's easy to assume evil about someone that you do not like. And so the remedy for this is to try and remove those feelings of enmity, of envy, of animosity from that person. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, and this is an important principle when it comes to developing relationships with people, is that you're moderate in your relationships, in your feelings. He says, Ahbib, Ahbib Habibaka Hounin Ma. Asa and Yakuna Baghibaka Yomin Ma. Should love the one who you like in a moderate way, in fear that they may become someone you dislike. And the opposite he says, Wa abghib baghibaka hounin ma. Asa and yakuna habibaka yomin ma. Says, and dislike the one who you dislike in a moderate way in hopes that one day they will be your friend. To be moderate with our feelings, to manage our feelings, in particular those who we have grievances with, who we have developed some feelings, negative feelings towards, as people of faith, it's our duty to work through those feelings, to try and seek resolution, to try and seek out some way in which we can mitigate our personal problems. And then if that is a closed road, just not going to happen because it takes two, it takes two to reconcile. If that is not going to happen, then at the very least, we bite our tongues. And we pray for those that have wronged us. We pray for those that have wronged us and we ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our hearts to forgiving others as we hope others to forgive us. We ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to continue to guide us in our journey to Him in the home of the hereafter. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa akhru da'wana na alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa aqami salah.